Welcome back, boxing fans. So another great night of boxing. Obviously, we had the PBC card, and yesterday we had the top-ranked card. Tonight, there's going to be another card from Japan, and I think today or sometime, there's also a card from the UK as well. So there's quite a bit of boxing to talk about this weekend. So jump in, join, and let's chop it up. Um, it did not take the Boo Birds too long to start shitting on Tim Zhu, did it? Tim Zhu lost a competitive fight. It was a majority decision or a split decision to Vandura. And people are quick to now call Tim Zhu basic, one-dimensional, overrated, slow, flat-footed, all these kind of things. Start questioning his resume, who he's fought. Yet, this is a guy who spent the last two years chasing Charlo. It wasn't his decision to duck Charlo. It was Charlo's decision to duck him. He's mandatory, right? People love David Benavides as Canelo Alvarez is mandatory. But when Tim Zhu was Charlo's mandatory, people were finding ways to talk Charlo out of the fight, that he didn't need the fight that Tim Zhu needed to fight this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy to prove that he deserved it, to prove, right? That's the irony because we've seen a lot of these guys historically talk about, oh, how does this guy need to prove himself to fight Canelo Alvarez or this guy needs to prove himself to fight so-and-so? But yet these guys did the same thing. Nobody was ever calling Tim Zhu pound for pound. No one was ever calling Tim Zhu the face of boxing. What people were saying is that Tim Zhu has steadily improved fight after fight after fight, stayed busy, had great performances against guys that beat Charlo, who were predicted to beat Zhu because he was flat-footed, one-dimensional, not that good. And, of course, once he knocked that guy out, <clears throat> then he gets no credit for beating Tony Harrison. And this was going to be no different today. Tim Zhu took this fight on short notice taking a lefty as opposed to an orthodox fighter, taking a guy who had eight to nine inches height and reach advantages over him. And he saved this PBC card. Tim Zhu saved this PBC card. He did not need to say, okay, to fight Fundura. He could have said, fuck that noise. Uh, I ain't fighting. Uh, if Thurman is bailing out, we can reschedule this fight for a couple months down the road. He could have done that, but he didn't, right? And still he's going to be criticized because he got beat by Fonduro today. And we know why he got beat. Once he got that cut over his uh, on his head and had all that blood flowing into his face, you could see that, that the momentum changed and that he was struggling to stay focused and, and really do what he was doing early on in that fight that was so effective. And it eventually would have been effective to him getting the victory. Hats off to Fonduro. He stayed consistent, did what he had to do. He fought far more controlled and far more intelligently than he's ever fought in his career. And it paid off in the end. So now him and his sister, the only two brother sister world champions in boxing history. So congratulations to them. I wonder if people are going to be talking about their dad as uh, trainer of the year. Probably not. But the reality is, you know, Tim Zhu did what he had to do. It wasn't the best performance, but under these circumstances, you can understand why uh, a guy would have some issues. And, and that's what happened. Now, we see what the PBC is doing. The PBC is, of course, uh, shoehorning Errol Spence into this conversation. I mean, you know, we want to criticize Tim Zhu for losing to Fundura, but the last time we saw Errol Spence, he got his ass beat from pillar to post by Bud Crawford. And now he's going to jump in to fight a six foot six fighter. And if he loses to him, of course, the same people that were crying that Brian Fundura or sorry, Sebastian Fundura was a weight bully are going to say that once again. But you notice they're not saying that now with regards to Tim Zhu because they're not fans of Tim Zhu. And they're not fans of Fonduro. They're fans of Bud Crawford and fans of, fans of you know, uh, <coughs> Errol Spence and fans of guys like Elijah Pierce, who just thought of, fought a 35-year-old fighter yesterday and gets praised for fighting that guy as if that was a 
top level opponent at this point of that guy's career. But this is the racial bias we see consistently from many of these YouTube channels. So it's not a surprise. Thanks everyone for jumping in. Boxing Truths in the house, Mars, Paquita. Uh, how are you guys? Jay Will, hello. Um, <laughs> Machado's in the house. Sorry if I just uh, quickly tried to read what you guys are saying. What's up, Sean? Salute. Tim would watch Fanduro if it weren't for the cut. I think so. The people don't watch boxing in the first two rounds. He was countering the jab with ease. Fanduro didn't change his game plan the entire fight. Exactly. He consistently did what he had to do, which was just very simple. Even his sister talked about keeping it simple. Uh, the cut just made the job more effective. Exactly. There was a great fight. Fight of the year candidate, in my opinion. Well, I don't know if it was that great. I think there's been better fights so far this year. What annoys the heck out of me is that they're giving Spence a unification fight, push at 154 after a wasted year of Crawford's time, and he's coming off a brutal KO. It's crazy how the PBC operates. Well, I mentioned on X or Twitter, as it used to be known, maybe what the PBC is trying to do now, the way this has worked out, is putting Errol Spence in with Funduro for the WBC title. Don't be surprised if they drop the WBO title because obviously Bud Crawford is now mandated. So maybe Bud Crawford will fight Tim Zhu for that WBO title and then the winners can match for unification. I mean, <clears throat> if things play out that way, that would be pretty good. And you couldn't really be too hateful towards the two established stars getting lesser known opponents at 154 to try to obviously become two and four weight world champions all to build up the rematch between spence and bud crawford if you're going to do a rematch this is what people said historically spence should bounce back with a significant win right they obviously are going to do it at 154 so win titles at 154 generate some interest because at this point nobody's interested in seeing errol spence get his ass beat again by bud crawford tim had Funduro on bambi legs before the cut Spence loses to Fonduro and Tim Zhu. I thought Tim looked good in those first few rounds. Uh, taking away jab, landing the right. Uh, Tim looked completely different. Fonduro's jab looked much more effective. Even though his jab was sticking out there, but there wasn't much behind it, right? And I think that's why it was easy for Tim to take it, uh, sort of work around it in the first two rounds. But then when you can't see and you just getting tapped by fucking something. I think it's more of an annoyance than anything else, throwing your timing off and not letting you be as effective as you were early on. Um, I think Tim Zhu should have fucking went to that body a lot more, man. That would have opened up the big hooks to the head, uh, you know, and he could have won the way Devin Haney beat Lomachenko. Body work. We know body work means more than headshots, so he should have done that, and he would have ended up retaining his title. I actually thought the doctor was going to stop the fight. Tim's team should have denied late replacement. PBC knew what they were doing. Well, Tim Zhu's fucking team should have a better cut, man. <laughs> That's what fucking they should have. Tim Zhu is a hype job. Can't believe people actually wanted him to fight Terrence Crawford. Come on, David. You just sound stupid when you throw out words like hype jobs. Now you're being counterproductive. Right. And giving people fuel who consistently say this kind of stupid thing about non-black fighters, because every non-black fighter is a fucking hype job. And you're just reiterating, reiterating this whole fucking talking point. The point is, Tim Zhu was what he was. We didn't know how good he was. The point was he was beating everyone in front of him. If he would have beat Funduro today, he would have got no fucking credit for it. And, and then he would have deserved a Terrence Crawford fight. Terrence mandated it wants to become a four-way champion, Tim Zhu would have been the champion. So what's the issue? The event did very well in Vegas between these two fighters. And that's not because of fucking Sebastian Funduro, because these tickets were sold before this whole situation happened. So maybe Thurman sold it. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, uh, people got to stop throwing out these hype job type of things. He cost me 600 tonight. Oh, well, that's why you're upset. But, you know... In boxing, anything can happen. And that cut, who would have expected a fucking elbow slam on the top of the head to open a cut that your team fucking couldn't 
contain that just poured blood down your face all night, right? Like, I mean, this reminded me of the 70s when bloody battles were normal, right? But uh, today, not so much so. We had the Mississippi coming down his face of blood. Uh, Bud would beat Tim, in my opinion. Well, most people favor Bud to beat Tim. But for Bud, he'd be fighting a legitimate 154-pound fighter. It would have been an undefeated fighter for unification. It would have been a solid fight. You know, better than Jeff Horn, who Bud Crawford fought to move to 147. Tim Zhu already beat Horn and is more significant, has done more than him. So it would have been a solid fight. And if they could have did it in Australia, that would have been big. Pitbull wasn't playing with Roly. Uh, you know, of course, everyone favored Pitbull. I sort of went out and went for Roly, thinking that Roly's size advantage reach maybe would expose something from, from uh, Pitbull that we haven't seen before. But you got to give Pitbull credit. He came in determined, resilient, uh, did what he had to do broke that guy down and stopped him and now is a world champion. He is the eighth Mexican world champion currently today. So congratulations, Mexico. You got eight world champions in boxing and Cruz Manguilla is not a champion, but these kind of fighters, the fan friendly style they have, Zepeda's also not a champion, but these fan friendly style of fighters, this is what boxing fans love. They love entertaining fighters that make entertaining fights. Zerto Ramirez looked good in winning the Cruiserweight title. Oh, did he beat uh, Gulamarian? Okay, so there you go. So now we have nine. Sorry, I didn't even see that he won. So that's nine Mexican world champions. I didn't see Zerto won. Did he stop him or just beat him by decision? Now maybe we're going to get Zerto versus David Benavitez because uh, David did mention that he would be interested in taking on that fight. And then, of course, Canelo's still ducking him. Dude's fighting at cruiserweight. <laughs> PBC tried to rob Cruz. Judge had Roley winning before the stoppage. I see that, yeah. Zerto looked good. Uh, I missed that fight. I didn't see Errol ever fighting Crawford again. If I'm being honest, I'd rather see Virgil, Tim, Fundura, Crawford fight amongst each other. I think Errol's time is up. He's undisciplined. Yeah, but... I mean, I understand your point of view. It's always, I'm the same. I like to see new guys get chances and obviously new blood in the sport. And, you know, it just keeps things interesting when you see different people. And surprisingly, sometimes people overperform. Other times they underperform, like De La Santos against Shakur. Uh, but, you know, when you get to a point of Crawford and Spence, They've already put in their work. They're not interested in fighting a bunch of up-and-comers that are dangerous and hungry and, and want what they have. They'd much rather get the big payday. Probably still drinking. Sup, Sean? What's up? Hand History Vault. Uh, no, Zoo doesn't deserve a fight with Crawford. He cherry-picked Thurman. He didn't cherry-pick Thurman. Dude, man, are you okay? Who offered that fight? You think Tim Zhu went looking for fucking Keith Thurman, an inactive 147-pound fighter, or the PBC, who's trying to generate pay-per-views, uh, came up with that fucking brainchild, right? It's easy to blame the, the boxers for what the management and the promoters are pushing because they have bigger agendas, right? They don't care so much about the fighters. They care about the bigger picture. And that's what this is. They're using Thurman for the bigger picture. And tried to cherry pick Funduro and it went wrong. How do you cherry pick Funduro when he's a late fucking replacement? Yeah, I'm glad I didn't buy that fight. Uh, if you cherry pick Funduro, who would you have him fight at 154 today? Exactly. Crawford not ready. Virgil is unavailable. So who would you have him fight? Uh, laugh out loud. Now Tim is a hype job. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's normal because he's the wrong shade of pale. And so the only explanation for him doing well is that obviously he is a hype job. Can't see hype job. David Fanduro was a replacement opponent who was already in training camp. Yeah. And the Russian guy beat uh, Mendoza today in a good performance, right? So now he is the WBC 
in term. So in truth, shouldn't he be getting a mandatory fight with Fundero next, right? Instead of Errol Spence in the mix. But we know the way this goes on. PBC guys can have mandatories for three years and it never becomes an issue. Virgil Ortiz, Madrimov are better fighters than Fanduro, and so is Jesus Ramos. Well, guys got to fight to prove that. We saw Jesus Ramos get beat by Erickson Lubin. We saw Fanduro destroy Erickson Lubin. I know triangle theory doesn't matter, but the reality of the situation is none of these guys have stepped up and above one another. Tim Zhu didn't, Fanduro did it, Mendoza did it. Lubin hasn't. These guys are all good fighters, but nobody's proven that they're great, right? That's why people favor Spence and Crawford to beat them. Zhu wanted Lubin, but he priced himself out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't better be a fight through a similar cut? He did, yes, and stopped um, what's-his-face. Don't make excuses for the guy. It's not about making excuses. Like, dude, man. I know you lost money, so you feel fucking pissed off. So that's fine. Understandable. But let, let's try not to be uh, sour. Virgil is still a mystery given his medical conditions. He came back against Frederick for a one-round fight. Uh, he won't fight Tim without another tune-up fight. That can go the distance to see the weight. Well, that's the thing. I mean, who knows? Larson, Frederick Larson, you know, it's good to get a couple of rounds, but I mean, that doesn't prove anything. Why is there so many Crips talking crap in your live, Sean? I don't know. I don't know. Just the way it is. Boxing people come where they control. Virgil had one fight at 154 and it was at 156. Virgil needs another fight to show he can make weight good. Yeah. And he just needs it after inactivity. Boots would beat Tim too. Oh my God. <laughs> oh fuck. Come on, David. What are you talking about? So now you're you're gonna jam fucking Boots Ennis into the conversation. I, I mean, if that fight was to make, I think the majority of people would pick Boots to win, just like the majority of people were gonna pick Bud Crawford to win. So what's your point? Boots Ennis is not some scrub. You can't just throw him around to try to diminish Tim Zhu. Oh, fuck. Tim Zhu ain't shit. Boots Ennis would beat him. If you say that, then throw fucking Cobb in the conversation and say you think fucking Cobb would beat fucking uh, Tim Zhu. Come on. If you're going to make that stupid a statement, at least use the correct guy, not fucking Boots Ennis. Oh, my God. Southpaw killer. I'm going to block you. I mean, come on, dude. Take your shit fucking somewhere else. Another white champion exposed. You guys don't hold titles very long. What a fucking tool you are. Really. And now there's nine fucking Mexican world champions. How many black American Mexican champions there are? I don't think there's nine. So what does that say about black American fucking fighters? Overhyped, underperform. Literally, you can name three guys right now that fucking you can be proud of. Congratulations. The difference with you is I fucking wasn't acting like Tim Zhu was pound for pound. <laughs> Nobody was. Tim destroys Fanduro if it wasn't for the cut. David, if you can't see that, stop betting. You need a different sport. You'll go broke. Just because you lost your bets on a cut doesn't make him a hype job. Really, really don't put effort in. He was in his bike the entire fight. Oh, Roly, yeah. Well, he was trying to walk him into an uppercut and land shots, right, and try to use his reach, kind of like Fanduro did. The difference is uh, short man's pressure was just too much for him. Those big shots to the body, you could see that they were really, 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 really giving him a problem. Uh, a majority decision. Oh, okay, so it was competitive. Zerto won a majority. And where was that fight? Was it in France? Well, be fair. Canelo wanted to move up to Cruiserweight to fight a trash can. No, he wanted to move up to fight Macabu, a world champion. Who did Zerto just move up to fight? Zerto, who's fucking way bigger than fucking Canelo. He just moved up to be the champion in Gula Marian. What's the difference? There is none. 
actually fucking Macaboo's fought better opponents than Gulamarian has. Macaboo was a joke boxing truth. Oh my God. You dudes, man, are jokes. You don't even watch cruiserweight boxing. Literally. But yet you have such strong opinions. I mean, Canelo trying to become a five-weight world champion. Is it any different than fucking Roy Jones moving up to heavyweight to fight John fucking Ruiz to become a heavyweight champion? Would you be so critical of him? Of course you wouldn't. You wouldn't shit on fucking Roy Jones for moving up to try to do something historic by fighting a fucking scrub heavyweight. Not one of the top guys, but the worst fucking guy available. But when Canelo's going to do that, to put himself into that historical level of five weight world champions. Of course, all the boo birds come out fucking being critical. You dudes are just so fucking easy to see through your hate, your bias, your racism. Holy fuck, man. Are you guys boxing fans or what? Bo Chuck looked good tonight. Yes, he did. Now, will he get his mandatory fight with uh, Funduro? Tim is the real deal. Tim looked good, and he's improving every single fight, staying super busy, has a whole country behind him, so he can go back to Australia and still sell out pay-per-views, right? And he just might be fighting Bud Crawford next for the WBO title, like I mentioned. Don't be surprised, because that's what the PBC would love, to do a double feature, right? Those two guys on pay-per-view. Your lives are not the same with all these poor victim mentality crips talking smack. Well, people just need to be fair and consistent. That's all. But unfortunately, people love a, a platform. Zoo on Funduro fought the asses off. Salute to both. Exactly, exactly. Coming through tough situations for both of them. Funduro with a broken nose. Tim Zoo with a big cut on his head. You know... And obviously fighting a guy on short notice who was fucking tough, man. Long, long, lanky motherfucker. That's how he got hurt. Because those long dudes in their fucking elbows. You ever play basketball with those long, awkward guys? That's how I got a cut over my eye from one of those free swinging elbow fucking motherfuckers. Tim Funduro both destroy Spence. We will see. Spence look fat and obviously doesn't look in good shape right now. But mind you... Like many people, like Erickson Lubin. I just heard Erickson Lubin crying yesterday in the interview. And he feels that he didn't get the opportunity, that people are biased against him. Yet somebody in the comments that mentioned that he priced himself out of the Tim Zoo fight. That's why his name was pushed out and they brought Keith Thurman in, who's obviously a bigger name anyway and would generate more pay-per-view buys. Funduro came in, but they offered the fight to Lubin. But Lubin's not in shape. Even though you know Tim Zhu is fighting Keith Thurman, who historically is fucking old, inactive, and injured, you're not trying to prepare like Mendoza, who obviously was training and sparring with uh, Tim Zhu. So when an opportunity came for an interim WBC title, he was ready for it. Obviously, he lost today, and it's short notice moving in to take on uh, Surrey Bolchak, but... This is the difference between some fighters. They stay ready, right? Stay ready. As opposed to guys that are being weight bullies, they constantly need fucking months to drop weight to make weight, which is what Lubin's problem is. Lubin's probably walking around at 190 right now, right? Errol Spence walking around at 190. Uh, I think Bochuk is better than Frenduro too. Yes, but he's still questionable with his jaw, right? After that knockout loss to a good opponent, but not a great opponent. I'm not happy, Sean. I was rooting for Zoo. Yeah, I was hoping to see Zoo win. I wanted to see Zoo fight Bud Crawford. I thought that would have been a good fight, even though, yes, I expect Crawford to beat him. But nonetheless, you know, it's a big fight. Roldy got humiliated and exposed. No, he didn't. That guy got humiliated and exposed when he was gifted a world title by fighting Barboza, who was kicking his ass, and only because the ref stopped the fight was he able to win the title. Shout out to Zoo for taking the fight. Nobody would have took it on 10-day notice. Uh, hope the exercise is his rematch clause. I hope he has a, a, a rematch clause. That You notice it never came up in conversation. Not from Funduro, not from Tim Zoo, not from anyone. 
because I think the truth is he doesn't really want to fight that guy again because of his length and his awkwardness. And I think he would say that if I can get the Bud Crawford fight, which is who he called out after the fight, and Funduro obviously faced off with with Spence, he's like, fine, Spence, you take that guy, I'll fight Bud Crawford, right? That's who I was going to fight anyway. I'd rather fight him as opposed to fucking rematch that guy. Tim is a lowercase version of Canelo. Uh, you got cl cloned or clowned. Tim stock didn't drop. Tim is the real deal. How could your, your stock drop when less than two weeks before you took on a replacement opponent? Right. And the truth is, if he would have walked away after Thurman got hurt, nobody would have blamed him. He didn't need to step in and continue to make sure this card happened. But he wanted to fight in Vegas. He wanted to do what his dad had done. He wanted that big American opportunity. So he did it. You think Roley retires or gets a Ryan Garcia payday? Well, in truth, I mean, that's something you probably could still do, right? Like a Roley fucking Ryan Garcia both coming off of losses type of fight. It wouldn't obviously be as big as it would have been. Uh, but Roley walked away from pay-per-view with Ryan to fight <laughs> Cruz. So, you know. Yeah, to be fair, Jesus Ramos shit the bed too. If you're elite, you shouldn't be losing to Lubin. That guy almost got killed by Guasha. Uh, Zoo got hurt by Guasha, to be fair, too. Guasha's a good fighter, right? But Ramos, people were really talking him up, right? Really boosting him. He's young, hits hard. People thought, you know, really Lubin was just supposed to be that, that name opponent for him to make a statement against before jumping up to that next level. But he really just never showed any fire against Lubin. Right. And Lubin's fighting for life and death. So he did what he had to do. He got the win. Congratulations to Lubin. Now we'll see what those two guys do moving next. But obviously, both of them are waiting in line behind new 154 pound fighters, Errol Spence and Bud Crawford. And, and you know, that was inevitable. Tim is a good B level fighter who still has to prove he is very elite. Of course, exactly. Right. And he's still young enough, active enough has support behind him and can learn from this and move on. I mean, how much longer can Funduro stay at 154? Tim isn't powerful or fast, but he's competitive and tenacious. True. Bolchuk molded Mendoza like he was handcrafting clay pottery. I didn't see that fight, but uh, I heard that Mendoza's corner should have stopped the fight earlier. Spence sounded like he was drinking wine to me. Can you imagine Spence being at a boxing event and not being drunk? I'll take Boots at 154 over Tim. <laughs> Boots not at 154. Let's have fucking Boots do what he's doing at 147, man. There's lots of guys potentially at 154 that could beat Tim. No one said there wasn't. No one ever talked about Tim being the killer, the king, you know, at 154. He was a top contender a world champion, thanks to winning an email title uh, at 154. Tim's grade is attributed to his counterpunching and his workmanlike fucking ability. Don't mean much to say that. I just think the whole 154 is filled with inconsistent, incompetent fighters overall. The established guys are concerned. Can we agree on that? I agree com completely. People, I think, always overrated the 154-pound division, mm -hmm. right? There was never any elite fighter there, including Charlo. Charlo was the most elite, but he wasn't elite compared to Bud Crawford and others, right? And that's why I think Crawford goes in and destroys all those fucking dudes, right? And he should. Mexicans do seem to win all the time versus Euros and now Australians. Well, definitely beat fucking Englishmen. Roley versus Ryan is intriguing. I think Zhu would have gotten the cut. He would have won. He was snapping Funduro's head back early. Well, he broke his nose early, right? And he was going to the body. He was mixing up going his levels very well. He was countering over the jab, basically taking his jab away. But then once he had all the blood in his eye, the jab became far more effective. And he became a little, I think, more panicky 
especially the first two or three rounds after that, thinking, are they going to stop the fight? What's going on? And started walking into a lot of shots, being a little overly aggressive. And I think after that, then he sort of took a step back, tried to go back into his game plan, but just wasn't nearly as effective. And at that point, uh, Fonduro started to get into a rhythm. Uh, John Boxing's drinking Thunderbird and crying because two Mexicans won titles. <laughs> He'll just downplay both of them, right? Shit on them, criticize them, and then hype up. Uh, what's his face? The Floyd Mayweather young kid who now went to 3-0. and The irony with fucking Kermel Moten on this undercard, when did he be put on that undercard? I didn't even know he was on the undercard. Not until I saw he won a fight today. So I'm like, they're trying to promote this kid, but let, they're not even promoting him. I did not even know he was on this pay-per-view card until post-fight. Uh, Jay Will is a GGG hating troll. You should never hate GGG. The dude's a good, solid fighter with a great jab and good power, good amateur pedigree, who was ducked by all the 160-pound world champions. Gula Marion is better than Macabu. Is he? Does he have a better resume? Has he been in with better competition? I don't think so. Inactive, hasn't done as much. Hasn't been in with nearly as many top-level guys. That's why Macabu has losses, because he fought more top-level cruiserweights. Um, so why can't Canelo fight a cruiserweight then? Canelo is five foot fucking seven. Fight should have been stopped in the third, fourth round. Well, if it would have been stopped in the third round at that point when the ref looked at it, it would have been a no contest, right? And then people probably would have been disappointed with the whole pay-per-view that they paid $85 for. So you got to give praise to Tim for being resilient and continuing. He could have complained to the doctor he couldn't see and had a no contest happen and went that direction, right? But, you know, that wouldn't have won him any fans. Rolly was fighting killers in his prime before he moved up. Canelo just picks low hanging fruit. What are you talking about, Southpaw Killer? Like, you cannot talk such pure bullshit. Roy Jones fought Tony and B Hop, yes. And then he fought a lot of fucking bags, a lot of fucking dudes that were fucking heavy bags, not fucking quality opponents at all. Most of the great fighters at 168 were UK fighters. He didn't fight any of them. There was also Michael Zuski. Didn't fight him. There was a lot of elite fighters Roy Jones did not fight in his prime. He could have fought Michael Zuski for undisputed, but he didn't, right? Because his pride was too big, too arrogant. That happens, right? I ain't hating on him. But you now criticizing Canelo, who literally fought fucking an undefeated trout for unification. Fought a Shane Mosley, who was past his best, but as a young kid, you fight guys like him because of name recognition. Then he fought Floyd Mayweather, TBE. What pound for pound number one fighter did fucking Roy Jones fight early on in his career? Sure, those guys went on to become top level fighters, but when he fought them, none of them were. B Hop wasn't, James Tony wasn't. They weren't there. They weren't that. Come on. Like, low hanging fruit. Bivol. Bivol was cherry pick until he beat him. And now people fucking are picking Bivol to become undisputed light heavyweight champion. Sean has a lot of LDBC haters. Do you understand the jump up from heavyweight to cruiserweight is 25 pounds, right? Why do you think he chose not to fight there after testing 175 against Bivol? Exactly. But that's like people make the stupidest fucking claims consistently. Right? Like, I mean... Historically great light heavyweights didn't go to cruiserweight. Historically great middleweights didn't go to fucking light heavyweight. Who fucking bagged on Marvin Hagler for cherry picking welterweights to get paid instead of moving up to light heavyweight to take on a fucking legendary Michael Spinks? Nobody. People talk about it, say he should have done it, that that would have been really a huge legacy fight for the middleweight champion to go up to light heavyweight like Sugar Ray Robinson had done prior and ended up getting knocked out by Joey Maxim, right? 
people wanted that to happen, but we lived in a different era, right? And, and truthfully, he wouldn't have got hated anyway from the fucking trolls and fucking fanboys that now fucking reside in boxing because they would have fucking been in bed with him like they are fucking with Spence and Tank Davis and everybody else, right? And then they would have held fucking everybody else to a whole different level of criticism like they do. Tim got beat up by a stick figure. Well, he didn't get beat up. Did you see the first fight, Martinez versus Cordova? I didn't, but I saw that Martinez just edged that shit out. Martinez, man, he's really dropped off the cliff, eh? Hard. He absorbed heavy shots and really outworked Martinez from round seven on. Yeah. I mean, Martinez, the biggest problem with him is he he got destroyed by fucking Roman Gonzalez. <laughs> And since then, uh, has not looked fucking dominant at all. I think Zhu would beat Lubin, to be fair. Me too. Cordova's corner gave him horrible advice. If he tried to champ round, he may have gotten a draw. I expected Lara to win, so that wasn't much of a surprise. Nobody fucking cared about that fight. Michael Zarafa, Arizlandi Lara. Arizlandi Lara is the best fighter that no one gives a fuck about, literally. If he fought, nobody knows. If he didn't fight, nobody would care. Roley said Haney runs too much, but he did the 100-meter dash the whole fight. I laugh at mofos talk about this and that. Their game plan is and the same when you face a come-forward opponent. Yeah. Hey, man, glad I found you again. What happened to your old channel? John Boxing. That's what happened. He got my channel closed down because he's a rat and fucking... Uh, woke, sensitive mofo that likes to put it out but doesn't like to take it. Many of these YouTube channels, right, when you expose their narrative, these dudes, man, they just can't handle it, right? Uh, Bruce Vane, right? Uh, Dante's Boxing Nation, right? Ego, right? The whole LDBC. These dudes are pussy whipped, man. They just cannot fucking support their narrative. They don't have the balls to do it. So they'd rather just block anyone with a contradictory opinion and just have a bunch of fucking ass-kissing fucking bootlickers on their fucking lives. That's why I'm happy to have a few people with opposite opinions. As long as they're respectful, you can have a different opinion. That's fine. Roley versus the winner of AB versus Cobb. That would be a worthwhile fight. If I was uh, PBC, I'd do that. You put fucking AB against Cobb, both shit, but they both fucking draw fans and then have the winner fight Roley. Sounds smart. Smells like a good deal. Uh, Bochak got stopped earlier in his career, his GGG without the chin, basically. Yeah. I think him, Lou, from Go Ukraine, Mendoza rattled Bochak a time or two at the end of the fight, Pro Box TV fired George. He was just talking about it on his stream. Really? Why'd they fire him? Because he wasn't biased enough? Uh, I was high on Jesse Ramos till he pulled the crap he did. Wow, Jesus Ramos, sorry. Tim stock dropped, in my opinion, because now him and Fonduro got to heal and do a rematch late in the summer. Bud can't wait around for that. He is pushing 37. No, they don't need to do a rematch. Why would fucking the PBC put Errol Spence in the ring, do a face-off with him and Fonduro if they were fucking planning on doing a rematch with Tim Zhu? What I told you is probably true. Fonduro's probably going to fight Spence. Tim Zhu's probably going to fight Crawford. WBO title, WBA title. They're probably going to drop the WBO title because they don't want to deal with Crawford because they already have things scripted to fight Errol Spence. Uh, is Spence really going to wait if he wants a fight now? No, wait. That fight's going to happen fucking probably August, September. 154 is usually a division for the guys who are not good enough to become middleweight champions. Exactly. And too big to become... Uh, Contenders at welterweight. A little off subject, but what happened with Janabek fighting Hamza Shiraz? 
why all this talk about Janabek moving up? Dude is a hypocrite. I didn't hear any talk about um, Janabek moving up. And as far as fighting Hamza Shiraz, I think he's a great fighter. But this is a guy who's being talked about fighting Amal Williams on that big uh, Saudi Arabian card because that's his level. Amal Williams. He doesn't deserve a world title fight because he hasn't done anything at middleweight yet. He looks good, but against fucking who? He should fight Amal Williams. If he beats Amal Williams, then we can start talking about him potentially getting a world title fight. As far as Janabek, Janabek may be moving up only because he can't get fights with the big name dudes at 160 pounds, right? You're going to move where you can find the money fights. That, that's what you're going to do. Like Sergio Martinez did when he moved away from fucking 154 because none of those guys would fight him and moved to 60. Crawford should fight Lara at 160 if he's serious about the Canelo fight. Who wants that fucking fight? I mean, good name recognition, but how many shots of Jack Daniels did take for Spence to step in that ring? And I know Andrade ducked Janabek, but still, he did. And so did Jaime Munguia. I think Castano was honestly just as good as Regis and Ramirez. Taylor and Mel, both good fighters, but never thought they were special. Boo Boo Andrade was hiding out at 154 and ducking GGG when GGG was the real boogeyman at 160. Well, all those guys were fucking talking about fucking GGG. And only after he got beat and showed that he wasn't the destroyer that he had been prior to Canelo beating him, uh, then they all moved to 160. And none of them really fucking did anything. Like, who did Andrade or fucking Charlo fight at 160? Andrade never fought an ex-world champion or a current world champion or a future world champion at 160. And Charlo fought, what's his face? The Ukrainian fighter. That's the best opponent he fought. Good opponent, but not a world champion. Uh, tonight, some sense was violently beaten into Roley. No, that guy is fucking, you can't beat sense into him. If Danny Jacobs at GG, when the competition went up, GG's KO stopped. GG was the king of Tank Davis baby belts. That's because the world champions fucking blatantly ducked him. Right? Two things can be true. Right? He could be the king of the baby belts because all the other champions ducked him. Daniel Gill chose to fight an in a, a domestic UK opponent, got beat, and then said, oh, no, sorry, it wasn't domestic because he's from Australia, but fought a UK opponent, lost his title, and then said, okay, now I'll fight you. So you could have fought GG for unification, but now you're coming back after you got beat <laughs> instead of trying to rematch the guy that you got beat by, who you were probably going to do better with than you would with GG. I think Manguia ducked Janabek too, but I think Manguia would have beat Janabek. It would have been a great fight. Two different styles for sure. Kyron Davis got injured. Kermel Moten was inserted into the first fight of the free Amazon Prime card. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's good to give him more fights, but it's unfortunate that he was such a late replacement that people didn't even fucking know he was fighting. Like, literally, I didn't know until I saw that he'd won the fight. And then I was like, huh? Where did he get on the card? If Manguia would have fought Janabek and beat him, that would have made upcoming fights with Canelo more interesting. That's true, but beating Ryder did that already. Roy Jones beat arguably pound for pound number one, James Tony at 168. James Tony was not arguably fucking pound for pound number one when fucking Roy Jones beat him. Stop your cap. I know, yes, he did beat Michael Nunn, but beating Michael Nunn when you were fucking the underdog by a mile doesn't make you pound for pound number one on anybody's pound for pound list ever. I was around at that time, Jay Will. Come on. Stop your nonsense. It's still interesting. Tony was undefeated going into the Roy Jones fight. Sean, he beat none. Uh, McCallum and Barkley. You wrong. RJJ fought a monster, James Tony. Nobody criticized James Tony or fucking B Hop, two legends, obviously. But the comment was Roy Jones was fighting killers and Canelo was ducking and cherry picking. He fought Laura, 
who fucking just defended his world title now, still beating the shit out of fucking dudes at 40 years old and fucking fought Floyd Mayweather, who is ranked higher pound for pound than D-Hop, James Tony, and Roy Jones. Not necessarily in my book, but consensus-wise. Austin Williams, uh, Shiraz was going to fight from what I understand. Yeah, that's a great fight. They should do that on that uh, Saudi mixed promotional card. Uh, Sergio Garcia, who just got destroyed by a prospect, was only five fights. Sandy Jacobs had 25 pounds on Lil G and still took a beating. Yep. Uh, he chose not to take same-day weigh-ins, according to the IBF, so losing the IBF title before the fight even started. Fonduro was going life and death with Castro until the stoppage. This is all why I don't rate Fonduro. Well, that's why you've got to be fair when you talk about 154, right? Who's great at 154? I like Madrimov, but is he great? Fonduro, Surrey Bochuk, Mendoza, Tim Zhu, the Russian guy who nobody knows who fought in the PBC card for fucking six years was mandatory for Charlo's IBF title for three years. And still, we don't know who he is, and I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, and a slew of other guys, Castro, Castano, who I don't know what fucking he did. He retired after getting beat, getting two money fights against Charlo, and then he just retired back to Argentina. Uh, John Boxing is a woke Joe Biden supporter. Yes, he is. Was big compared to Brooks. Brooks never should have taken that fight. Yeah, but Brooks was a replacement opponent. GGG went to the UK to fight Chris Eubank. And unfortunately, Eubank ran like every other fucking top guy did. On top of getting knocked out by Mendoza, Brook weighed more than GGG in the ring. I think Zhu losing to Fonduro has exposed how limited he is. That's why I feel Zhu deserves every bit of criticism he gets. Oh, my God. Doesn't he deserve any praise for keeping the PBC card alive, for fighting a guy on short week's notice who's fucking uh, a behemoth? Doesn't he deserve any credit for anything? He just deserves criticism. <laughs> Fundero's getting destroyed by Spence. GG would never, uh, could have gone down to 147. Come on, Hawker. Leo is just a uh, dude do on draw day, life and death with Madrimov. Well, GG knocked him out in two rounds. Destroyed. I think the only way to win money on boxing this year is to bet every dollar you got for Virgil to knock out Delorme. Well, how much money can you actually win for that? Same time, Stan Jonas could have stopped Delorme with that kind of competitive fight with him. Sean, I know we have opposite opinions, but you're always respectful and you never block me. I can't lie. Your knowledge of the sport is A1 when you're not fanboying GGG. Good night, a brother sleepy. Knight. Yeah, I actually think Fonduro would beat Spence too. Mayweather ducked GG. Wow, come on. We can't say he ducked him. The problem with that, nobody expected Floyd to fight GG. The problem is fucking Floyd just wouldn't fucking stop capping from GG. And people go, what do you mean capping? <laughs> when you're a fucking retired fight fighter and you keep fucking mentioning another dude saying he's easy work, you're capping. Either you're going to fight him or shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sean, yes, Tony was. Prime GG had all the top guys from 154, 160, 168 ducking him. Didn't Golovkin beat a real American? Kang's, uh, William Monroe, Curtis Stevenson, Danny Jacobs. Da -da -da. Hawker sounds like GG and Apple Sanchez. Ducking Ward. Even Ward said he'd go down to 164. Ward would never have went down to 164. That's fucking cap. That dude fucking never fought below 168 again in his career when he was calling out GGG. He fought light heavyweight when he came back from his two-year hiatus every single fight, which was five fights. Never even fought at 168 again. So how was he going to go down to 164? Pure cap. Corey Cotto is the only guy's name who fought both Charlo and Fonduro. Uh, where are we? Andre Duck Prime GD2. G said he would have fought Ward at a catch weight 164. Ward moved up to 175 and said little G has to fight him at 175. 
To be fair, I can understand how Zoo could have thrown off with the opponent's change. Southpaw TV, Ego Storm B, Man, Drew Titan, Fanon, BFTB, Black People for challenging their takes. Huh? Mayweather at a press conference bought up GG saying he was no special effects, easy work, but never had the balls to send a contract. That's my point. You don't need to diminish and shit on a guy that's not in your weight division that you have no fucking interest in actually fighting. Right? If he's in your weight division and potentially you can match up and prove the things you're saying, then talk your shit. But you're talking shit to a guy you have no intention of fighting. And if people push it, you're going to say, oh, he's a middleweight. So then shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. And people criticize GG, but he wasn't the one clout chasing and calling out Floyd. He was calling out fucking Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Frotch and Canelo, big name fighters that were active and relevant when he was fighting. Nicotine and all black coffee during a fast is the breakfast of champions. Here, you forgot. I just had my black coffee right here. What do you know about Limo, Sean? What's your opinion about him? I, I don't know much about him, but I, I think he's going to get his ass knocked out pretty quick by Sabriel Matias. The best win he has is against a domestic UK fighter. Uh, the guy that Hitchens is fighting is pretty tough. I didn't see who's Hitchens fighting. What do you know about Oh, uh, Floyd, Dr. Amir Khan? He did Dr. Amir Khan because he literally said, you guys tell me who to fight and I'll fight him next. Amir Khan won the voting and Floyd fought Maidana twice. And it's not that people think Amir Khan would beat Floyd. It's just people wanted to see a different style matchup. Not a fucking flat-footed, come-forward type of fighter, which is what Floyd fought consistently when he came back from retirement. Uh, the guy that Pacheco is fighting is pretty good. I like Pacheco. Uh, I see Jared Anderson is fighting another C-level opponent. Top rank must be nervous to move up competition after Charles Martin was tagging him. No, Lemos is the guy Hitchens is fighting. Matias is fighting Paro. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Lemos is Argentinian. Paro is uh, Australian, right? I think Lemos has a solid win, but he's been so inactive. I don't think he's fought in over a year since he had a big victory. I must say it was kind of funny when Tito Garcia used to make all of them videos calling you uh, a wino. But Tito was the guy drinking all the time. He's just jealous that I still had fucking hair. I mean, imagine what he'd think now. He's dead and I still have fucking hair. <laughs> He's ugly. He's always ugly. You know, it must be tough for a fucking ugly, bald motherfucker with nothing going for him uh, to have to have conversations with me. I get it. I get it. I understand. You know, ironically enough, I was looking at pictures yesterday from friends of mine from university who are older now, obviously, as I am. And these girls, they used to be super hot, look like grandmas. And I showed the pictures to my friend and he was like, Ugh. I'm like, she's younger than me. And she was so fucking fine. Not that long ago, but it is. Yes, Tito's dead. That's what happens when you're a fucking wino and a degenerate. Thank God Roly lost. Uh, shout out to Cruz for calling out Haney, Tank, Teal, but not Sabriel. Ah, Damon, you noticed it too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that. So you're calling out all the money dudes, but you're fucking ducking the fighter that probably the majority of boxing fans would prefer you to fight. Like if you list Teal, Tank, Haney, Sabriel Matias as Cruz's next opponent, I think fucking 80% of boxing fans would easily pick Sabrina Matias because that fight would be fucking, that shit would be off the hook. Mexico, Puerto Rico, a legitimate Mexico, Puerto Rico. Man, not fucking Canelo versus fucking Berlanga. No, no, no. Cruz versus Sabrina Matias, unification fight, 140 pounds. 
you know I'm going to make a video on that. But uh, it's good to see you caught that because when he said it, I'm like, what? What about, what about that? Come on, man. But that's always how he is. You know, the only reason he took this fight because he knew it was going to lead him to a Tank Davis rematch. And that's, you know, who he's going to fight next. Tank Davis. Tank going to come up and try to become a three-way world champion by rematching fucking Cruz. Uh, Mayweather never fought a pure boxer after Zab Judah. Exactly. Yeah. Murr is actually decent, but Anderson should beat him. I think Tito was on booze, drugs most of the time. For sure he was. Matias is all wrong for Cruz. It'll be a good fight, man. Tio was also not serious about fighting Terence Crawford. I don't think Cruz would go near Matias. Tito made a lot of vids hating on me too. That dude. You think about all those videos he made with gay porn stuff. So you got to like download gay porn. And then you got to like fucking edit to put other people's faces on the gay porn. And put so much time looking at gay porn to make a video that you think is trying to make me look bad but you're the one that made that video because everyone knows that's not me your editing is not that fucking good obviously now with ai and stuff you could imagine how much better it would be but back then man that shit didn't bother me i was like what what's wrong with this fucking guy he's demented gary antoine russell versus pitbull would be fun that would be good and it's also an in-house pbc fight uh, I think a great fight the PBC should try to make is Pitbull against Russell. There you go. Two people, like-minded. Respect the dead, Sean. <sighs> Why? Respect is earned. That guy didn't earn fucking any respect. Just the opposite. Fuck that guy. Because I know his ass is burning in hell. And that's where he probably deserves the reason a fight with Matias and Pitbull is unrealistic now is that Matias is with Hearn. Yeah, but Tio is with Aram. Haney is with Hearn. So the only available fighter that he could actually fight that's in his platform would be Tank. And that's what most of us expect that he's going to do. Tito hated Newton, Thunderdome, Hawker Mustang, and Precise the most. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But to be fair... Precise, it's hard to like that guy, right? I don't even watch his videos anymore because his racism is just over the top and it's just consistent and just fucking, it's just like, man, you sound just as bad as the LDBC. Listening to your videos makes me dumber. Hawker, fucking the biggest troll on you in YouTube history. We have a medal, uh, like a trophy. We just got to get together so that we can fucking... Give it to him at the annual YouTube award ceremony. And Thunderdome, well, him and Garcia, I think, both fucking cracked out. So, you know, damn. Hitchens, Matias could fight each other, but that's not nearly as entertaining a fight. Hitchens is going to fucking try to use his reach and his feet, control the distance, and just win what would be a boring fucking fight. I bet you still watch Harvey Weinstein movies. Of course I do. Don't you? Don't fucking lie. Don't you fucking lie, you piece of shit. You know you fucking watch his movies. And if you were him, you would have done the same thing because that's the kind of fucking demented piece of shit you are. Of course we watch his. You don't watch The Matrix? What are you, mental? Who fucking doesn't watch The Matrix now? Raise your hand if you still watch The Matrix. Come on, give me a fucking break. Uh, was Tito LDBC? He was before the LDBC. Baby Tank will enforce a catch weight for a 140 belt. Hitchens would probably try to play keep away during the fight. Nordic Warrior low key races too. Oh, another thing too. Muratala looked like fucking garbage. Did you see that? I didn't see the fight, but I heard he looked really bad and he struggled. But I will give him the pass like I gave Shakur and like I gave everybody else. Tio, people don't always fight their best, right? Sometimes you have off nights. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But the problem is he's trying to get a big fight. He's on the brink of potentially getting a Shakur Stevenson WBC world title fight. But now you look shit and Shakur looks shit. So now putting you two guys together, shit equals shit, obviously equals greatness, right?
that, that's what you know math would tell you two negatives can't equal a negative but i'm not a math student so tell me if i'm wrong uh, i used to try to watch fanon but it's tank versus haney talk every day a fight that's not even going to happen i know i know you know like literally i can't believe he gets so much views and so much fucking people watch his stuff when it's just the same fucking garbage reiterated every fucking day it's ridiculous uh is boxing now it all the real deal is boxing know it all the real deal who's boxing know it all precise thinks that 80 percent of the fights a day are fixed constantly is what you need the real deal is what you need still making boxing videos that guy was mental smart but you know those guys that are too smart where they're fucking like they need meds that was him hitchens excuses said he wouldn't take the matias fight is because the ibf weight limits so then you're a fat fuck who's a weight bully okay who do you think Valdez should fight next? I think they're trying to get him Lopez, right? That would be a great fight. Lopez is going to knock his ass out. Uh, I think Zepeda Shakur should fight. Me too. But apparently Zepeda walked away. According to Golden Boy or something, they're moving in another direction or something. But it's like, fuck, man. Now's the fucking time. Even if you lose to Shakur at this point, it ain't the end of the fucking road, man. Like, you're going to fight another nobody? I don't get it. Is this guy, Steve Claggett, good that Tio is going to fight? He's a solid Canadian fighter. Um, you know, top 40, 140 pounder. Um, but, you know, I think it's just because he struggled and didn't look good in his last performance. So they're just trying to keep him busy. So throw him in with this guy so that then when they step him up with a big name opponent next he will be more active and hopefully that will make him sharper and perform better. But to be honest, I don't think De La Hoya really wants that fight. Cruz was ordered to fight Shakur and Cruz turned it down. Uh, they just called Shakur for clout. Johnny, but how much clout does fucking Shakur have? Johnny boy is in the pen. I heard that Johnny boy is always in the pen, right? Do you watch? I didn't watch Zerto, but I heard he won. Do you think Lopez would knock out Valdez? I do. He might win, but stopping Valdez? No, I think he will. I heard Golden Boy wanted to fight in Vegas. Shakur wanted in New York. Newark. So that's the problem because Zepeda, the destination, you got to fucking compromise, right? That's the problem. Compromise. Because then who's Shakur going to fight next? Has anyone heard rumors about who Shakur is going to fight next? Because I saw people quick to criticize some people's opponents, but I think everyone's taking mediocre mid-tier opponents right now. Uh, Edward Sugar Nunez is the beast at 130, I think. Steve is a Canadian. Your country is represented. Represent. Uh, I guess I got to act like he's the best thing ever then, right? Valdez has a great chin. Yeah, yeah, I'm not questioning his chin. I'm just questioning how many of those power shots awkward heavy shots from uh lopez he can take i don't care to ever see shakur fight again to be fair everybody has off nights shakur had an off night against nakatila he had an off night uh against fucking de los santos you know uh against a guy like zapeda who's coming right at him He'd have to perform, man, or, or lose. Shakur is going after the guy who fought Frank Martin, I think. The name is Arden. The German guy that Frank Martin just beat? See, but that's the thing. People are question, criticizing Lopez for fighting my Canadian brethren, criticizing this dude for fighting this guy. I wonder if those guys are going to keep the same energy if Shakur takes on this kind of fucking fighter, Right? Dudes are hypocrites, man. Hypocrites. Hawker said that what Repid and Thunderdome passed away. Thunderdome passed away? Johnny Boy's in prison. You don't have many channels left. You don't? What do you mean, me? They're not my channels. None of the, 
And what's what rep it? I don't even know what that is. It's not my channels. These are people that have their own opinions. The only thing that they have together with me is they're both, they're all white, Caucasian, but that's irrelevant. Rumor has it Shakur is fighting some guy named, oh, okay, he's fighting the German, the German guy. Exactly. A Euro bomb, right? If Canelo was fighting him, he's a Euro bomb. If Lomachenko was fighting this guy, imagine if Lomachenko was fighting this guy. John Boxing is shitting on Lomachenko for fighting George Cambosis. He's praising Tank for fighting fucking Frank Martin, who's never beat a top 10 opponent. And now Shakur is fighting this guy. <laughs> Come on. No one's going to even fuck about that fight. No one's going to fucking... It better be free, because otherwise no one's going to watch that. Nobody. Valdez is a class act. I don't know why people go out of their way to bash and hate on that guy. Yeah, he's quality, right? He fights everybody. You can't hate on him. He's not the best fighter out there, but at least he tries. Jay Will, Johnny Boy blocked me about three months before he went to the pen. John will say Shakur is fighting a killer. Of course he will. Now he'll talk about, oh, you know, this guy uh, was a great opponent that Frank Martin fought, and now Shakur is fighting him. You know, great opponents. Great, great, great opponents. <laughs> it's like, it's okay if guys fight subpar opponents because everyone does it. I mean, Oshaki Foster, the guy he fought to uh, first defend his title against, that guy was fucking nothing. The fight turned out to be fucking fight of the year in a war. But it's not as if he was a great opponent. But, you know. Yeah, somebody said Thunderdome passed away. I wouldn't be surprised, right? That guy always looked like he was... But it's unfortunate. Thunderdome wasn't a bad guy. What does Bud Crawford do now? He's going to fight Tim Zhu for the vacant WBO title. Yeah, that dude quit against Frank Martin. If there was more time, he would have stopped stoppage loss on his record. Johnny isn't everyone's favorite guy, but I don't wish jail on anyone. I think Foster is overrated. Well, he's looked good and also looked vulnerable, right, which isn't bad. It just means that potentially you're going to be exciting. They came out with ESPN's top 10 best active lightweights. LDBC channels are not happy that Loma was ranked number one, even though he's got the best resume out of everyone at lightweight by a fucking country mile. Tank Davis and Shakur's resume at lightweight, he is fucking pathetic in comparison. That's just a fact. Uh, would he beat both of those guys at this point? Maybe not, but... Would they beat him? Maybe not. Like, neither one of them has a victory as solid as a Lomachenko on their resume. Joe Cordina did Duck Foster now. Oh, did he? I think Thunderdome is in jail. Uh, don't bad about Oshaki, Sean. That's John's boo. Every single black dude that is fucking secondary is John's fucking boo. He will fanboy for every guy fucking that is down here. And then shit on every non-black guy who's fucking up there doing way more fucking in the sport of boxing. Yet they get criticized like crazy. I like Anthony. Yeah, Anthony's not a bad guy. I have nothing bad to say about him. Joe Cordina is going to duck Nunez. Apparently, Johnny choke slammed an elderly dude. <laughs> fucking John. Who would be surprised? John is too old to be so fucking angry. He's not a kid anymore. Is that really what Johnny did? Damn, Johnny is a bully. If he did that, he's a bully. I'll give an example. A Johnny boy in Niagara Falls with his friend was bullying some old dude in front of a bank. My dad, who obviously was old too, came out of the bank and saw this and told the two guys to fuck off. So the one guy came up to my dad and now wanted to bully him, took his shirt off. And my dad looked at him and thought, fucking skinny, scrawny punk. Fucking hit him with a jab in the right hand, broke his nose. And then the police came and that was the end of it. Just because a dude's old, man, you better hope fucking he doesn't know how to fight, John. You might not be able to get close enough to fucking choke slam him. Yeah, that's true. Loma has the best resume at 135 and arguably beat the undisputed champ. I mean, that's the thing. 
maybe you are a Haney fan and you feel Haney beat Loma, but that fight was fucking this fucking close. That's a testament to Lomachenko, who's been inactive, was 35 years older, right, and has had a long career. Tank Davis and Shakur, that's who they should be fighting. But they're not. Hence the criticism. You think Kentucky should part ways with Calipari, UConn all the way. I definitely think they should part ways. How do you get so many great fucking talented players to your fucking te your, your team and then perform so piss poor? Losing to fucking a team. Come on. You should never fucking lose to that team. You should have ran them off the fucking court. Right? UConn, right? They don't have the depth that, that Kentucky has, but they're way better coached. Obviously, they got more veteran players as well. But you think of that one white guy who's playing for them. He's not better than any of Kentucky's fucking guards, right? Can't shoot better, isn't faster, fucking doesn't have the upside to any of them, right? And then you think of Newton, who's good. Newton is a solid player, very experienced. But even Newton, I don't think he's better than any of the Kentucky guards. The big guy, he's experienced. But what's his upside? I mean, Kentucky had three seven-footers. So even if they get in foul trouble because they're over-fucking-active, you got three of them. You could rotate those dudes out, fucking use their fouls, be more aggressive. They just weren't aggressive. They played like pussies. And they're in the toughest division in fucking college basketball in the SEC, where every single team plays like it's football season. Yet then you go into the NCAA tournament and you fucking pussy up, right? Man, yeah, Duke won. Duke won a close nail biter. UConn destroyed Illinois, which is pretty impressive, uh, even though they were shooting terrible, they, their percentage in the first half. Um, but defensively, they were fucking killing Illinois. Uh, Illinois did not know what was happening to them. And, and But I don't understand why Tennessee-Purdue game isn't today. They say it's tomorrow. I thought all four games should be today. Why three games today, one game tomorrow? Purdue-Tennessee game, that's a game that I'm excited about. For my pool, Tennessee better fucking win because it's the only team I have left. <laughs> should Caitlin Clark accept the Ice Cube's $5 million to play the big three? No, because what's she going to do in the big three? She's a woman. Every single guy that plays in the big three who's not getting paid nearly as much money as her is going to go out there to fucking prove a point that she's getting paid too much money and she can't compete and she's going to be exposed pretty fucking quick. Right? So she better off just to take that NIL money and go to the WNBA. I think Hurley tactics, he brings that old school mentality. He's doing good. Duke's still winning without coach Cal. I didn't see that, but I don't watch much. Agreed. Um, you know, they've been inconsistent all year. But like Kentucky, they have great recruits. And, and like people felt with Kentucky, sure, at the beginning of the year, you're going to have some, you know, youth issues. But as the season progresses and by the time March comes, you should fucking be seasoned by that point, right? You're not kids anymore, especially going through a whole fucking ACC or SEC tournament. Right. And Duke stepped up and their quality players have stepped up as well. Uh, unlike Kentucky. What do you think about the kid named Cooper flag? Who's going to Duke? He's good. You watch his high school team player. You can go on YouTube and you can watch them. Uh, that team is fucking unbelievable. Like he's good, but he might not even be the best player on that team. They got a big kid down low. The dude's got fucking Barishnikov footwork. Soft hands. He's not athletic, but as a low post player who can dribble all the way down the court, make great passes, that kid's talented, man. They got another kid who's almost exactly the same as Cooper Flag, Afro dude, light skinned brother, uh, also very dominant, very good player. Not as offensively gifted as Cooper, but maybe defensively more so. Their guards are good. They got a white guy who's going to Indiana who's fucking butter. Butter. The kid's stroke is sweet, sweet. 
that team is is unbelievable. Like I would not be surprised if that high school team could be a shitload of teams in the NCAA tournament. Is Damon uh, Draymond Green a Hall of Famer? I don't think so. What's the key to surviving a tiger encounter in the wild? Stay on top of the elephant. Did you hear Jay Wills talking about the tournament should have 94 teams? I did. And I also put a video on my basketball channel. You can go check it out when I responded to his other take when he was trying to talk about Hurley and saying if Hurley wins back-to-back -back titles, he should be thought of as the best college basketball coach of all time because of the age he's done it. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What? Don't you remember fucking Donovan from Florida? He was 10 years younger and he did it, right? 10 years younger. Get a fucking grip, man. Stop blowing smoke up someone's ass. Hurley fucking is doing a great job. And if UConn joins Duke and Florida as the only teams to win back-to-back -back titles in NCAA history, that's fucking incredible. But let's fucking calm down for a second, man. Calm down. Draymond is definitely going to the Hall of Fame. That's because nowadays they let everyone in the Hall of Fame just because he won titles and some Defensive Player of the Year awards. But that dude is fucking cancer. Cancer. He's killing the team. They need to cut him out, flush him down the toilet, and fucking move on. Draymond is our version of Rodman, but with more offense. He was part of four rings. Cucho is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and I wouldn't put fucking Kukoc as a fucking Hall of Famer either. Six man, right? You know. The problem is, in the, the world we live now, everybody's a Hall of Famer. Everybody's a winner. You're 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 a winner too. Come on. Hug it out. Good job, guys. Winners on three. One, two, three. Winners! Fuck me. We could have a little tougher scrutiny and make dudes really fucking earn it. But no, no, no. Everyone's a winner. Nobody isn't in the Hall of Fame that doesn't belong. Yeah, okay. That's true. Agree to disagree, but it is what it is. So let's jump over here. It was just announced today the undercards for... The uh, Usyk Fury fight. So let me find that. Dun, 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 but here we go. This is the announced undercard for that Saudi Arabian card starring, of course, Alexander Yusik, Tyson Fury, for the undisputed heavyweight world title of the world. Uh, the first person to do it since Lennox Lewis. So great accolades. I would love to see Yusik do it and join Crawford and Anui as the only two weight undisputed champions. But at the same time, I would also love to see Fury win so we could get that AJ Fury, a uh, huge UK fight. The undercard has been announced. Jay Opataya is going to be rematching Marius Breedis for that IBF title that he won off of Marius Breedis in a fucking great fight back in the day when it happened a couple, you know, how long ago it was, more than a year ago. Jay Opataya has definitely looked much better recently. The dude's dynamite. <laughs> He's a killer. He's definitely one of the Best young up-and-coming guys in boxing, you know, Australian, 24, 19, you know, kids 28 years old. He is a monster. His victories over Jordan Thompson and Ellis Zorro. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He fucking crippled those dudes. Now he's going to step in to fight Marius Breedis. Obviously, two losses, one to Usyk in the World uh, Boxing Super Series back in the day. Uh, and then obviously one loss to Jay Opataya in 2002. So, yes, you know, quite a while ago. Uh, I think Jay Opataya is going to fucking kill him. Kill him. 
Not literally, I hope. But I think he's going to fucking make quick work of him to reclaim his IBF title and uh, potentially put himself as easily the best fighter at cruiserweight. Who wouldn't love to see Jay Opataya fight Zerto Ramirez for unification? Also, you got Joe Cordina, undefeated 17-0, defending his IBF super featherweight title against Anthony Casacchio, 21-1. I know people were criticizing Cordina for ducking certain opponents. I'm surprised he's not fighting the other UK guy who just moved up from 126 pounds. I thought that was the most likely fight for him. Uh, but, you know, this is a solid fight. Not a fight that's going to get people too excited. You're fighting an Irish fighter with no power, right? Who's fighting this level of opponent? Not bad guys. Sam Bowen, uh, obviously Michael Magnesi. You know, good guys, but none of these guys are great. Obviously, he got beat by... Uh, Martin Ward already, which tells you that, you know, he is really just a domestic level UK fighter at best. So Cordina should get past him and make Wales proud. Mark Chamberlain's on the undercard, another UK fighter. Isaac Lowe, another UK fighter. Uh, obviously, this guy, Moses Atuma, who people are super excited about. He is the UK's version of, of Big Baby, right? 8 and 0, 6 KOs. Obviously, a guy that did very well in the amateurs, 19 years of age. At one time, they were talking about him uh, becoming the youngest heavyweight champion in history, doing it faster than Mike Tyson. I don't know if you're going to be doing it by fighting this level of competition, but at the same time, you're a young kid, so you know it's not the worst thing ever. The guy he's fighting is 24 and three, but if you look at his resume, he does not have a good resume. He has not been fighting good level opponents. So it's not going to make people too excited. Then we have this fight, Ajit Kabial, coming off of a fucking great win, beating my Canadian superstar fighter, who's from Russia, but Canadian, fighting Cuban Frank Sanchez. I, I mean, this is a great fight. Apparently, this uh, is going to get the winner of this, uh, the mandatory WBC title fight. What's this thing? Get out of here. Fuck off. Close. What are you doing? Get out of here. Get out of here. What is it? Go away. Oh, my God. What's going on? My computer's been hijacked. Jesus Christ. But Kabiel, obviously, coming off of that win against Aslan Black Mukamadov, undefeated, killer heavyweight. Big power went in there, stopped him in four rounds, uh, impressing everyone because no one expected that to happen. Everyone sort of expected him, if he could win, to win by unanimous decision. Of course, uh, my man here, the Cuban, came off of beating Junior Fa impressively as well, stopping him in seven rounds. So at this point, I mean, that's a quality fight. You get three quality heavyweight matchups. I don't even know why this thing is still on my fucking screen. John bashed his own undercard. I thought he wasn't a fan of networks. John exposed himself constantly. He's just a fucking fanboy. He always going to hate everything when he thinks it's not black. And his own obviously is not black, not like the BBC. I don't know why this thing is up here. <laughs> And I don't know why it won't go away, but uh, okay. Maybe we'll just use this as an opportunity to say uh, sayonara, zaijian, au revoir, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for jumping in. Uh, sorry about the abbreviated ending, but, you know, it is what it is. I know a lot of you have been up very late watching boxing, so, hey, I'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. And pay attention to that Purdue-Tennessee game tomorrow. Should be a good one.